coming up in our newscast tonight. Former President Yimou Buck is grilled by prosecutors, and it seems the questioning will last through the night. While the ruling party demands a thorough probe over the dozens of allegations the ex-president is linked to, the main conservative party calls it political retaliation. Rex Tillerson is fired. Expectation builds as to how his replacement will affect Washington's diplomacy over key agendas, including North Korea. Pyongyang's athletes failed to win medals, but that doesn't undermine the significance of their maiden Winter Paralympics participation. South Korea's curlers, meanwhile, have their eyes set on making the semifinals. New Center begins now. It's 8 p.m. here in Korea, coming to you live from our studio in Seoul. This is Arirang News Center. Welcome to our program. I'm Daniel Cha. Once again, our starting point is the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office, where Lee myung Bak is being questioned over a slew of corruption allegations. The former president is expected to be there late into the night. We connect to our Kim Hye-sung standing by at the site. Hye-sung, do fill us in on the latest and perhaps also a recap of how it came down to this. Daniel, former President Lee Myung-bak's interrogation is taking place on the 10th floor, room 1001, the same place former President Park Geun-hye underwent a marathon questioning about a year ago. The entire questioning will be video recorded. Lee is accused of 20 offenses, including bribery, abuse of power and embezzlement. The first round of the interrogation started around 9.50 a.m. and ran through 1 p.m. The second round began at 2 p.m., which ran till 7, then a dinner break. Prosecutors first asked Lee about auto parts company TAS, of which Lee is suspected of being the real owner. Lee is represented by four lawyers in the room, including his former presidential legal assistant Kang Hoon, and has reportedly denied all the allegations related to TAS, saying he did not intervene in management of the company or own slush funds. In the next uh, round of questioning, prosecutors are expected to interrogate him on suspicions that he accepted bribes worth around 10 million U.S. dollars. And I also understand the session is set to go on for many more hours. What happens next, Hye Sung? Because Lee is a former president, uh, prosecutors hope to wrap up their questioning today and not summon him again. A senior prosecutor told journalists that Lee will be treated with dignity, but that the probe will be conducted thoroughly and transparently. The prosecutor said they have prepared around 120 pages of questions, which means the interrogation is likely to stretch late into the night. The place is still swarming with journalists, showing the huge amount of attention the case is getting. An ambulance and 119 responders are at the prosecutor's office in case of an emergency. The interrogation itself could end around midnight, but most don't think Lee will be able to leave before tomorrow morning after prosecutors take a look through their interrogation records through the night. And the prosecution is expected to decide whether to request an arrest warrant for the former president within this week. Back to you, Daniel. All right, thank you for those updates. We appreciate it, Hassan. <coughs> Before entering the prosecutor's office, Lee Myung-bak stopped to address the press. The former conservative leader apologized to his supporters and the nation. Oh Jung-hee shares with us his remarks. After investigating a number of close figures, Korea state prosecutors are finally closing in on former President Lee Myung-bak, who stands at the center of a string of corruption allegations. The ex-president appeared at the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office a little past 9.20 a.m. after a nine-minute car ride from his residence in southern Seoul. Before entering the prosecution building, the former president stopped in front of hundreds of press members to deliver a brief message to the nation. I'm sorry to have caused troubles amid the economic difficulties and the grave security situation. And I send my apologies to my supporters and to people experiencing difficulties. I have lots to share with people as the country's former president, but I know that I should keep my message short. In history, there should be the last such trouble. I again express my apologies. 
Lee faces roughly 20 allegations in total, including bribery, creating slush funds and abuse of power. Wednesday's summons comes after state prosecutors over the past few months questioned numerous figures around Lee, including his son, nephew and brother, as well as presidential secretaries who worked with him during his term from 2008 to 2013. He's been firmly denying all charges against him, and many see his short remark before the press on Wednesday morning as a direct criticism of the current administration's efforts to eradicate what is being called wrongdoings of the past. Lee myung Bak's appearance at the prosecutor's office comes a year after former ousted President Park Geun-hye stood in the same place. He is the fifth former president to be interrogated by state prosecutors. Oh jung Arirang News. After months of investigations, we already have dozens of allegations linked to bribery, but that's not all. According to our Park hee more alleged shady dealings are coming to light. The day has come for former President Lee Myung-bak to face investigators at the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office. Lee, who served as president from 2009 to 2013, becomes the fourth South Korean leader to appear for questioning as a suspect in a criminal case. Here's a wrap-up of the major charges he's facing. Evidence shows the former president received at least 1.63 million U.S. dollars of illicit money from the National Intelligence Service and had it sent to the presidential office through his key aides. Prosecutors also suspect he received over $2 million from former CEO of Uri Financial Group, Lee Pai Sung, some of which was put toward Lee myung 2007 presidential election campaign. Then there's a the corruption-ridden auto parts company, DAS. Although documents point to his elder brother, prosecutors have concluded the company's real owner is Lee myung Bak and that he holds over 80 percent of DAS shares under various fake names. One of the major allegations includes Samsung Group paying over $5.5 million in legal fees to a U.S. law firm to cover DAS's legal costs. Investigators also identified slush funds, totaling to more than $28 million managed by DAS between 2003 and 2008. A large part of those funds are believed to be managed by Lee myung Bak and his family. The net also appears to be closing in around Lee's family members. They interrogated Lee's brother and DAS chairman Lee Sang-un, who was also the primary target of the DAS investigation. So was Lee myung Bak's son, Lee si young an executive of the company. Meanwhile, Lee's eldest brother and former lawmaker Lee sang duk was summoned for bribery allegations, mainly on receiving dirty money from the intelligence agency and Lee pai sung 40 the ex-president. Also accused of bribery, Lee's son-in-law Lee sang ju an executive at Samsung Electronics and husband to the former president's eldest daughter. Both have admitted to some of their charges. But the former president's charges extend beyond bribery. Lee myung Bak faces additional charges related to violation of law on the management of presidential records and violations related to election law. He's expected to continue to deny all the allegations during his interrogation. Park Ki-jun, Arirang News. Over at the National Assembly, most parties demand a thorough investigation into that scandal. However, the conservative main opposition calls the probe a tragedy, something that should never happen again. Kim Min-ji zooms in on the reactions from Parliament. All but one political party called for a thorough investigation into former President Lee myung Bak, who appeared for questioning on Wednesday over a string of bribery and other corruption charges. The main opposition Liberty Korea party, again, called it a case of political revenge, accusing the current liberal administration of using the investigation for political gain ahead of the June local elections. This is a historic tragedy for the former president to undergo questioning by prosecutors, and I hope the politics of revenge will not be repeated. The ruling Democratic Party of Korea called for the prosecution to carry out the probe according to the law and principles and leave no stone unturned. The party also criticized the former president for claiming the investigation is political retaliation. The party said the fact that Lee is facing about 20 charges is enough to put him in the Guinness Book of World Records. The former president still denies these allegations and claims that this is political revenge. The centrist Padamita party also called for a swift investigation, but also stressed the need to amend the Constitution to limit presidential powers, saying the concentration of power leads to corruption. This is all related to the so-called imperial presidential system. It shows how a five-year term in office leads to involvement in abuse of power and corruption. 
And now President Moon Jae-in says he himself will fix the constitution and craft a proposal. That is also a display of authority. The Liberal Party for Democracy and Peace said that while it's tragic for a former leader to undergo questioning, crimes have to be punished. The Progressive Justice Party was more or less on the same page, saying the prosecution must conduct a thorough probe to uncover the full truth. Kim min Arirang News. Hi, I'm Lee Ji Won, and I'm here to bring you the latest on the PyeongChang 2018 Winter Paralympics. It's day five of the Games, and it was another busy day packed with action. Team Korea's wheelchair curling team suffered its second defeat so far in a preliminary match against Norway. Norway took a two-point lead at the start, and though South Korea came back even in the second end, after Norway pulled ahead by seven points, Team Korea decided to concede after the sixth end, ending the game 9-2. But the host, the, the host team is having another go at securing a spot in the semifinals by facing Sweden, which is currently underway. With six wins and two losses, Team Korea currently stands second of the round-robin group after China tied with Canada. Now over to skiing. Medal races were held today in cross-country for the 1.1-kilometer and 1.5-kilometer sprint courses, but no medals for Team Korea. Shin Yeon was the only Korean to make it to the finals, but came in last among the six competitors at 3 minutes 38.7 seconds, a little over 7 seconds behind the leader. This was also the final race for the North Korean athletes at the PyeongChang Paralympics before they returned to the North on Thursday. Uh, Ma Yu-chul and Kim Jong-hyun participated in the men's 1.1-kilometer sitting sprint, but neither qualified for the semifinals. They both finished near the back of the pack in 31st and 32nd place, respectively. Ma with a time of 3 minutes 59.48 seconds and Kim with 4 minutes and 23.87 seconds. But regardless of the results, the uh, participation was per significant as it was the first ever appearance by North Korea at the Winter Paralympics. Let's now look at some of the standout events for tomorrow. There won't be as much action as today, but South Korea will compete in its first ever semifinals in para ice hockey. They'll be playing against Canada. Scoring against the world's number one team isn't going to be easy, but as world number three, South Korea will be looking for an upset. And Team Korea's wheelchair curlers will also have their last two preliminary matches against Great Britain in the morning and against China in the afternoon. With that, let's look at the medal table. That was our Lee Ji-won with the latest sporting action from the Alpine City. Thank you, Ji-won. We appreciate it. President Moon Jae-in and First Lady Kim Jong-suk, meanwhile, visited PyeongChang, too, to watch a cross-country skiing event at the Winter Paralympics. It's the first time being a spectator at a Paralympic event since the Games began last Friday. Skiers of both Koreas took part in that competition. A total of 22 North Korean athletes were granted wildcard spots by the International Paralympic Committee. After the race, the Liberal leader offered encouragement to both the South and North Korean teams, widely seen as a display of goodwill ahead of next month's inter-Korean summit. South Korea's ice sledge hockey team claims a Final Four berth at the Paralympics for the very first time. Spearheading the charge is Jung Seung Hwan, a player the team cannot do without. Lee jong yun gets us better acquainted with the star forward. Korea, for the first time in Paralympics history, has secured a ticket to the Para Ice Hockey semifinals. Although the Korean team was defeated by the U.S. on Tuesday, its consecutive victories against Japan and the Czech Republic were enough to classify the team as a runner-up to the semifinals. The team's star forward, Chong seung hwan scored both goals against the Czech Republic, making an impressive goal just 13 seconds into sudden death. Known as the Messi on ice for his noticeable speed, Chong led the South Korean team to the silver medal at the 2012 Para Ice Hockey World Championships 
and gold at the 2013 Para Ice Hockey Qualification Tournament in Italy. With such track record, the Korean sledge hockey player has been in the global spotlight even before the Pyeongchang Paralympics started. He didn't set out to be an athlete from the start, however. He only started sledge hockey when he was in college after being mesmerized by the sport when he tagged along to watch a game with his friend. His family recounted their initial skepticism when he started playing. I was sort of against it at first because we were all worried about him getting injured. We didn't know much about the sport either. Chong lost his right leg when he was five when construction pipes collapsed onto his leg. His mom still vividly remembers the weekend of the accident. It really broke my heart. We ran around frantically to four different hospitals, but in the end they all said the leg needed to be amputated. But she says how she treated Chong after the incident was probably what fortified his character and made the individual he is today. I cried every day in the inside, but I never showed it. I treated him exactly the way I treated his siblings and didn't give him any special treatment. It was only after the star player's recent post on social media, an honest account of his childhood, when he thought there was no hope, no future, that his family realized how much he actually went through internally. He was always a bright person. He didn't want us to worry, so he never showed signs of being stressed out due to his disability. Although Chong is the youngest out of three siblings, his sister says he's more of a big brother for her, someone she can rely on all the time. He's a way stronger person than we had ever imagined, so I just hope he keeps doing what he's doing and has good influence in society. Chong Suwan said in an interview on the opening day of the Games that a bigger goal than winning a medal is to give hope to those who feel at a disadvantage. Regardless of the final outcome of this year's Games, his fans and family have no doubts he has already achieved that goal. Lee jong Arirang News. President Moon Jae-in sat down for talks with the president of the Asian Development Bank, Takehiko Nakao, at the Changwa Day, where they discussed past and future cooperation. The liberal leader thanked the ADB for its contributions to Korea's economic development and said he would like to pay it forward. And to ensure growth is innovative and inclusive and to make development in Asia sustainable, the liberal leader expressed his determination to work closely with the ADB. U.S. President Donald Trump has fired his Secretary of State. This sudden turnaround is causing concern in Washington and Seoul, with the critical summit between the U.S. and North Korea set to be held in a matter of weeks. Kwon Jang-ho follows us this report. In a tweet, U.S. President Trump announced he was firing Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State and nominating CIA Director Mike Pompeo instead. There were conflicting reports over whether Tillerson was told during his trip to Africa or whether he discovered his fate from that message on Twitter. Either way, he confirmed his departure in front of the press later. My commission as Secretary of State will terminate at midnight, March the 31st. I'll now return to private life as a private citizen, as a proud American, proud of the opportunity I've had to serve my country. The sudden nature of his dismissal was unexpected, but not surprising. The relationship between Tillerson and Trump had been on the rocks for several months, and some were surprised he had lasted this long. However, there are concerns of the disarray and uncertainty that this change brings, especially with critical foreign policy issues up in the air, most urgently the landmark U.S.-North Korea talks slated for May. Until Pompeo is confirmed by the Senate, he is not the Secretary of State. 
the question here is, will Mike Pompeo be appointed before May? And if so, does he have preferences about who should be leading the arrangements for the talks? Then how much time will the new team have to make these arrangements for North Korea? For Seoul, the immediate issue was whether Foreign Minister Kang kyung would visit Washington as scheduled on Thursday as she had planned to meet Tillerson. The foreign ministry confirmed that the visit would go ahead, saying that she would meet with the Deputy Secretary, John Sullivan, citing the need for continued communication between the two administrations at this important time. Planning both the inter-Korean talks and the U.S.-North Korea talks will likely require close cooperation between Seoul and Washington to make sure they're on the same page on what to get from Pyongyang. The problem is that the process, the process of denuclearization, what will be the process that uh, the U.S. would accept with uh, Pompeo as a new Secretary of State. The South Korean government has proposed a two-step process, freeze and denuclearization. I don't think the U.S. would be satisfied with the first step for freeze. Pressure will be on Kang to swiftly establish a productive relationship with whoever her Washington counterpart is over the next two months. Kwon Jang-ho, Arirang News. South Korea is one of 44 countries that doesn't have a U.S. ambassador in place, but perhaps that's about to change soon, with Washington Pyongyang summit expected to be held in May. Jim young gil explains further. A retired U.S. Army general and the chairman of the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee may be possible candidates for U.S. President Donald Trump's ambassador to South Korea. The South China Morning Post reported on Wednesday that retired U.S. Army General James Thurman and outgoing Republican Representative Edward Royce are under consideration for the role. Edward Royce is a Korean expert. He has acted as a chairperson for exchanges between South Korea's parliament and the U.S. House of Representatives. The two candidates have a lot of Korean experience. The 64-year-old Thurman was a member of U.S. Vice President Mike Pence's delegation to the opening ceremony of the PyeongChang Winter Olympics in early February. The retired general served as the commander of the United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and the United States Forces in South Korea from 2011 to 2013. The 66-year-old Royce was also among Pence's delegation to PyeongChang. Royce announced in January that he would not seek re-election in the U.S. congressional midterm elections in November. There have been rumors that veteran Korean expert and former National Security Council member Victor Cha could be Washington's choice for the ambassadorship, but Cha was rejected for his unwillingness to endorse a preemptive strike on North Korea. After Trump said last week that he would accept an invitation from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to meet by May, the U.S.-Korean policy circle began moving with greater urgency to fill important diplomatic vacancies to support communication with Pyongyang. Jim young Arirang News. February's unemployment figures paint a grim picture of the nation's job situation. To try and tackle the problem, the government may consider using a supplementary budget. For a closer look into the possible developments, let's turn to our Kim mo The Ministry of Strategy and Finance is worried that February's slowdown in the number of new jobs created might continue in March. According to Yonhap News Agency, an official from the ministry said that there is a possibility that the unemployment rate for March will increase, adding that the ministry will come up with a solution using all available measures such as the budget, finance and tax systems. Speaking to reporters on Tuesday, the nation's finance minister Kim dong yeon also showed enthusiasm for a supplementary budget. He said that the final decision would likely be made on Thursday when the government will announce its countermeasures to the employment crisis at the presidential office of Chongwadae. An economic expert stressed the seriousness of the current employment situation in Korea, adding that there's a high possibility that the government will once again drop a supplementary budget. Because, you know, the, the current government has been already implemented a supplementary budget last year to create uh, more jobs. But uh, no matter, you know, how effective the supplementary budget in the past, the current government thinks that uh, job creation is so uh, important stage at the moment that I think the government will try to implement a new kind of uh, supplementary budget this time. 
Another expert who also shares the same thoughts said that improving the business environment could help solve the crisis in the long run. I think at this point, it is inevitable that the government will try to solve the current unemployment crisis in Korea through a supplementary budget. But since jobs are created by companies, I think what's more important in solving the problem in the long term is to improve the business environment so that firms can afford to create more jobs. Kim mo Arirang News. Stephen Hawking, arguably the most celebrated theoretical physicist and cosmologist in the world, passed away early Wednesday morning local time at his home in Cambridge, England. He was 76. Despite being diagnosed in his 20s with Lou Gehrig's disease, he continued to live and pursue what physicists call a unified theory of everything. Hawking first came to prominence through his research on black holes in the 1970s. He became a celebrity of sorts through his best-selling books and appearances on television shows. Many will agree his courage, persistence, brilliance and humor has and will continue to inspire people across the world. Time to turn to Michelle Bach at the Weather Center for the updates you need. Michelle, uh, the unseasonably warm weather is affecting the Winter Paralympics in Pyeongchang. Snow surrounding the tracks has started to melt, I heard. That's right, Daniel. Now the snow around the venues has started to melt. And for today's cross-country skiing, the athletes actually showed up in shorter outfits as well. Now tomorrow, some precipitation is expected, but it will likely be rain. And temperatures are looking to come back down, but they will remain into the mid-teens. And most parts will get from 5 to 30 millimeters of rain, while the provinces over in the southwest will get a lot more of up to 60 millimeters. Now, thankfully, this rain will relieve the drought and also the unseasonal temperatures. And tomorrow, her will wake up to 12 degrees Celsius, and it'll be similar elsewhere. And into the day, her stays up to 14 degrees, Busan peaks up to 15 degrees. And all the rain should clear by Friday morning, bringing mild temperatures and also sunny skies for the weekend. I'll leave you with the weather conditions around the world. That's all for tonight's edition of Arirang News Center. Thank you for staying with us as always.